So now that we've got the database built, let's actually use it. So I've got way too many tabs open here. I'm going to right click and close all tabs. And then I want to go to my program. Uh, no, not my program CS file. Where do I want to go? I want to go to my home controller. It drives me nuts when I have too much stuff open. So I'm going to go collapse a lot of this. Okay. So my home controller. So in the home controller, um, I want to be able to actually access the data from the database. And so the way that I do that is to set back up my constructor. So I'm going to create a public, no return type, right? So I don't put void or enter anything. It has the same name as the, the class itself, the home controller. And so this is my constructor run one time when the program is first created constructor. All right. So what I want to do is force the program when the home controller is created. In other words, when kind of things start up, I want to get an instance of that database. And so what I do in order to do that is I say, I want you to pass me an instance of a dating application context and I'll give it some name. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay. And what I want to do is uh, take that instance and be able to do something with it here in the my other uh, actions. And we know that the scope of this constructor is just between that brace and that brace. So once I leave this constructor, then this is going to be dropped from memory and I won't be able to access it anymore. And so uh, I'm going to say, let's create a private instance here of a dating application context. And I'm going to refer to it as, and you can see the underscore, the default is underscore context. And so when it does this little underscore, this is just a naming convention to say that this is, um, you know, this private variable that, that is brought, been brought in through the constructor. It's just telling us what it is in this context. So then I can say, take and set underscore context equal to some name. See, it already knows what I want to do. Underscore context equal to some name. So, so when this home controller is created, it goes out and builds an instance of the database and it brings it in. And I've referred to it as some name. Sometimes we just do temp or something like that. Maybe I'll say temp. So it's just being stored temporarily. And then here I'm going to take that temp and store it in the more permanent variable whose scope is between this brace and this brace so that it can be seen all throughout here and I can use it to, to query and get the information that I need. And so this is now using that context file to build an instance of that database for use in the program. All right, so now what do we want to do with it? So um, I can take uh, when, so on the post method, so when our application has been posted, I can take and say, go out to my context file, go to the uh, applications table and add what just came in for in the response. So this is now going to add that record to the database. Add record to the database. So whatever was passed in on that post method, this is going out and adding the the record to the database. But then in order for that uh, information to be stored permanently there, I need to add one other thing, which is underscore context dot save changes. And that will actually commit the changes, so to speak, to the database so that they're there. It'll go communicate with the database and add it to the database. All right, let's try it. See if it works. So I'm already getting stressed about having to be creative here. This is why it's nice in class. I can just say, give me a name, give me an age, give me a occupation. So we go into the dating application and fill out some information. Um, <laughs> the pressure's on. I'm just going to go use one of these other ones. Too much pressure. All right. So blah, test, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, age, uh, 
18 major uh, creativeness okay and then are you creeper stalker yes submit application and then it goes through the process I spelled relationship wrong and nobody even pointed that out to me um, and then I, I so that's that I close the database and then I'm gonna open up my SQLite, which it looks like it's already open. If I double click on this, it should open it up. And then in those uh, records, I can go in and say, select all from applications. And now it has that information that I just typed in, saved in the database. So we can update the database that way. Um, the other thing we can do that, um, Let's see, I don't want to do that. Um, the other thing we can do is to, uh, we'll, we'll obviously start pulling information from the database. In fact, we can, we can do that. We can say context and we use something called link. And I can't even remember off the top of my head what the command is. It's not in the notes, I'm not prepared. What do we do? It's, it's, uh, there's a command to go get from the data. Uh, it's gotta be in here somewhere. I can't remember. We'll get to that point where we start querying the data. Anyway, we can add records to the data. We can save changes and um, see those changes reflected in the database. And so this again is called model first database. We first created the model and then we use migrations to update the database with the information from the model, which by the way, if we get to a point now, so back to our command line, um, open in terminal where we want to get rid of our database we can say net ef database drop and it will remove our database we'll see it here in a second are you sure you want to drop the database yes and it will it will get rid of the database we can also remove migrations by saying net EF migrations remove and this folder will go away well the folder didn't go away oh it took the last migration out and so actually we can just delete this folder if we wanted to but then we can always go in again if we wanted to and run a new migration by saying .NET EF migrations add initial and we end up doing this a lot when we mess up our databases um, it'll go build that migration again we can look at it always look at it beforehand we can modify it and we ought to be following good database practices in here just like we do whenever we mess around with database um, you know this all ought to be good uh, design just like we would have done if we were building the database ourselves um, and then we can run that command again, .NET EF database update. And that should, if everything looks good, um, build another database for us. And sure enough, it's created one for us that we can use. It won't have that data we put in there, obviously, since we just dropped the table or dropped the database. But um, it's rebuilt the structure of that database for us. And so we'll continue to mess around with database. It becomes a very important part of everything we're doing to go pull data, update data, delete data. And so that's what we'll spend um, the next couple series of videos in is just working on all that CRUD functionality and just continuing to familiarize ourselves with ASP.NET so that we get more comfortable in building these apps. I uh, hope you're having fun. Hope you're enjoying it. It's good stuff. Spencer out.